Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to an episode of the Venom Vlog, and we are going to continue our coverage of the Ravencroft miniseries with issue three today. And again, this won't be, you know, I don't have a digital code for this. I know normally when I review comics, I give out a digital code, but I bought this series digitally when it was coming out, and I so I never got the codes for it, so I apologize for that. Uh, I will try to get more new comic reviews or discussions up at some point after the Venom movie comes out where I can give out more codes to all of you. So definitely stay tuned. We'll have a lot of stuff coming up. Between this show and Highway to Hell, we'll definitely have some cool books coming up to, uh, to give out some codes for. So for this episode, for Ravencroft number three, uh, written by Frank Thierry and art by Angel and Zueta. Uh, uh, hopefully I'm saying Angel's last name right, or Unzueta. Uh, hopefully I'm saying that right. And Jose Luis and Scott Hanna are the artists on this one. Um, great team on this book. I really do like the book overall. Uh, actually, I think Danny Kazem is the editor, and he was like an assistant editor on Extreme Carnage, which we've been covering lately too. And, you know, so I don't know what exactly his role is in that uh, capacity with assistant editing, um, because there's two assistant editors on that book, and then also um, Dev Den Devin Lewis, who uh, I'm not a big fan of a lot of his editing when it comes to event books. I feel like one hand never talks to the other hand, so there's a lot of uh, inconsistencies. But Danny, he's going to be the editor, I think, on the new uh, Scarlet Spider book coming up by J.M. DeMattis. And I'm, so I'm curious to see what he does on his own and if this series is any indication with him as the kind of one of the main editors. There's also Devin Lewis as a supervising editor on this one, but I don't know, again, like I feel like that's probably overlooking Danny. So I don't know, or maybe this is just a great example of both of their abilities as editors when they have a contained story with one writer. It seems like they do a good job on it, so that's good. I mean, sometimes people have strengths and weaknesses, um, so maybe this is their strength, is working with someone experienced like Frank Thierry uh, telling a, a solid beginning, middle, and end story, but still setting up a lot of mysteries and a lot of cool stuff. So I got to give him credit. I know sometimes I'm critical of those guys when they edit stuff like I am on Extreme Carnage, which I think is very sloppy editing. This is very clean. Uh, this book doesn't have a lot of inconsistencies, and they even reference stuff in continuity um, and build off of it, like you know the the death of Ashley Kafka, which we ended the last issue on, but also we ended the last issue on with the mystery of the guard getting pulled into cell 616 and who is actually in there. So that's where this book starts off. We have D-Man, who again is like someone who's part of the security team, and he's there going, all right, let the guard, you know, let him go. And the inmate in cell 616 is like, hey, he came here, he was going to open the door and attack me, I'm just defending myself. So he actually has the guard's weapon aimed at the guard's neck. And he's like, you know, back up or I'll take I'll take him out. He's clearly a scumbag if he's going to come in and try to kill me. And he goes, so survival of the fittest. I'll, I'll take him out first. And, he, and they're like, no, let him go, Frank. And that's when you see Frank Castle stepping out with the baton that has, you know, electricity coming out of it, like a taser at the end. And he's aiming it at the guard. And he's like, get away or I'll kill this guy. And that's when Kingpin shows up. You know, he's like, all right, Ashley Kafka, we'll deal with that in a second. We got to go in, D-Man, what's going on? And D-Man tells him Frank Castle has got out of his cell. And, uh, you know, he's like, no, we, we worked really hard to capture this guy. We can't let him get out now. So he says, Taskmaster, do you got the shot? So Taskmaster has now been revealed, uh, you know, as someone who's working for Kingpin because he was trying to keep all these people secret, but obviously things are going south pretty quickly and things are ramping up at Ravencroft. So Taskmaster has a sniper. He has, you know, Frank Castle's head in the crosshairs. But before he can pull the trigger, D-Man steps in the way and he says, look, no one's going to die today. And he looks at Frank Castle. He says, look, I know you hate a lot of us. We're bad guys to you. He goes, but some of us are trying, you know, you know we're, we're trying to do better. This guy is a screw up. Definitely this guard shouldn't have come in and done that. He will be dealt with and he will be punished for that. Um, but, and, you know, Frank's like, he won't be punished the way I can punish him. And he's like, yeah, I understand that. But we have rules here. Please, as someone who, you know, served and has, you know, been through situations like this, like understand that w I, we don't want any trouble and I don't want you to die. So can you just let the guy go and turn him over to us and, and go back to your cell? And so Frank says, fine. And he, he allows himself to be captured and get taken away. And Kingpin is like, hey, that was very awesome of you, D-Man. I appreciate you doing that. And D-Man kind of sucks up to Kingpin a little bit. And Misty Knight calls him out on it. Uh, but then the others, you know, the ones he was trying to keep secret, you had Hobgoblin and Moonstone and the others, they show up in front of everyone. And, and you know, Kingpin's like, look, nothing to see here. You take, you know, Frank back to his cell. Let me talk to my team here. And he goes to them and says, look, you know, we have another situation brewing. I don't know what this Ashley Kafka business is. So Misty, you and John kind of deal with that. We're going to go and uh, and investigate something that's been brewing underneath the facility. 
and and check something down there. So Misty's like, whatever. You're like, I, I don't care. Uh, right now, like, I'm interested. I want to know what you guys are up to. But I also have, you know, Grizzly, who's injured in the in the ward. So I need to go check on him and some of the other inmates that were part of our group uh, that have been attacked by, you know, the inmates here that don't want to change. So I got to go deal with that. And John Jameson's like, fine, then I'll deal with the Ashley thing on my own. And then you have Kingpin taking his group of villains down to the basement. And he's basically tired. He's like, I don't want to wait for the unwanted to attack. I want to go attack them first and bring the fight to them. So uh, so that's pretty neat. And so while that's all going on, you have Hyde, who is in his cell. He's in solitary confinement because of his you know attempt at killing people in the previous issue. Uh, someone walks up and throws a screwdriver in and says, hey, um, we need you, I need you to kill someone for me. And so, you know, you know, Hyde's like, yeah, okay. He's like, you want me to kill Grizzly? He's like, you want me to finish the job? And he's like, whatever, just kill someone. And yeah, if you want to go after Grizzly, that's great. Um, but here's the screwdriver, go get them. So we're like, all right, who did that? And meanwhile, there's tests being run. So John Jameson is upstairs with Norman Osborn and they have a scientist in there that works, you know, works for Norman, has connections to Norman. And they're running a blood sample test on uh, Ashley Kafka here. And what I like about this is that if you know the history of Norman Osborn and blood tests and things, uh, then you would know the outcome of this right away. But we don't learn that right now. But the blood test says that this Ashley is not a clone, is not a replica in any way, not a life model decoy, a full on human being actual uh, is actually Ashley Kafka. It's actually Dr. Ashley Kafka. And John Jameson's like, how can that be? You know, she died right here in these halls. Um, someone was pretending to be one of the guards. It was massacre. He cut her eye out, took it to open one of the secured locations, and uh, and she bled to death. And he's like, and I know because Spider Man was here and saw her bleed to death, and I was here when it happened. Um, so and so, you know, they're telling the story. And meanwhile, Ashley Kafka standing there holding her eye, going, "I don't remember any of this. Like I, I didn't die." And and so Norman starts questioning her, like. You know, are you fake? Like, are you, are you, were you plant? Are you a plant that was put here, you know, to throw us off? Like, what's going on? Are you part of the attack that Kingpin's thinking is going to happen? And John steps in and defends her and takes her off. He says, look, let's go talk. And he's like, Norman, don't ever raise your voice at her again. So John Jameson kind of being the protective type. And he brings her off down the hallway to talk to her. And then that's when uh, Hyde shows up. He decides he's going to go and stab John Jameson. But as he goes in to stab him, Something unexpected happens. Uh, a security guard steps in the way to take the to the blow to the chest, and it's D-Man. And D-Man gets a screwdriver shoved right into his chest. And I was like, no, man. Like, Because my friend Gene loves D-Man, but I never really cared too much about D-Man. But he has popped up in a couple things here and there that we've talked about on the show. But I was really liking him here. I really do like D-Man as this uh, security guy at Ravencroft. I think it works. Uh, you know, And even though he's, he's kind of a, a kiss butt with the kingpin, he also does have a moral compass. He's trying to do the right thing. So I, I like this. So when he got stabbed, I was I was like, no, please don't die. Please don't die. And meanwhile, while everyone's dealing with that drama upstairs, once again, Frank Thierry juggling everything really, really well. You have Kingpin taking his team of villains downstairs. Some of them are Thunderbolts. You know, then there's other just regular Spider-Man villains like Hobgoblin and stuff, Scorpion. Um, so he's taking them downstairs to attack the unwanted. But the unwanted are ready for them. So when you know Kingpin opens up the door to the unwanted uh, cell to lead into the room where I guess at one point you know, Cletus Cassidy was in there running the hive or whatever he was doing, he leads them into that room and they all just start fighting and killing all these unwanted monsters because that's all they are. They're just mutated humans. So some of them are deadly and some of them are just you know mutated humans that can barely walk. So you have all these supervillains going in and just pumpkin bombing and killing everybody left and right. But it turns out they're not really killing anybody. The unwanted were ready for this attack, and they have a little creature that has its brain on the outside of its body, and they're using it to project. This is how they controlled the kingpin before to open the door. They're using this creature to make the villains think they're attacking and killing all of the unwanted. But meanwhile, the unwanted are just gingerly walking by now that the gate is fully open and they can get out. They just exit and they're going into the, you know, up to the upper floors of Ravencroft to enact their plan and destroy the building and kill everyone in it to make sure it never, you know, stays up. So their intentions are good. They just don't want anyone else to be experimented on and end up like them. So they have good intentions, but they're willing to just go really far 
to accomplish their, their goals. So I like it. I, I'm loving this series. I think Frank Thierry is knocking it out of the park with it. And I can't wait to talk about issues four and five with y'all. But I'm not going to record them tonight. I think I've done enough tonight. Uh, but I'll get um, all these episodes up to you as soon as I can. And hopefully I'll still get these all up before the movie comes out. And I'll hopefully get four and five up before the movie comes out as well. I'm working my best, or working my hardest, doing my best, uh, everything I can to get stuff to you guys. But I appreciate the patience. I appreciate everything. And hopefully you are enjoying these. And if you have any thoughts on issue three here, definitely let me know what those are down below. And we'll continue the conversation as always down there. Thanks so much for watching the show. Like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I have more videos for you very soon. See you in the future. Peace.